What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Rewire. And this is a very special episode. I'm going to try to get a little bit deeper and, uh, and talk about some new stuff. So, anyways, I just got back from the gym, and at the gym, I listened to podcasts. And one of my favorite ones is called 10% Happier by this guy named Dan Harris. Basically, Dan Harris is a news anchor for Good Morning America. He had an epic freak out, a panic attack on air, and that's how he found mindfulness. So now he does a weekly podcast. He wrote a book called 10% Happier, but he does a podcast where he talks to different people, from people like the Dalai Lama to like meditators to scientists, actors, musicians, um, athletes. This week he had on police chief Sylvia Moyer, who is the police chief of the Tempe uh, Police Department in Arizona. So basically she's talking about how she's introducing mindfulness to the police force out there and the reason why she's doing it. Throughout this interview, she talks about the benefits of mindfulness on the police force, right? So a few things that she talks about. The first one is the ability to have compassion. When they go into a situation, they need to be compassionate towards the situation. For example, um, you see stories about people with mental health issues um, who have been shot, who have been killed, who have been tasered, right? Um, it's hard to be compassionate in those issues when it's such a high level of intensity and energy and you know emotions and all this kind of stuff. It's hard to even process the idea like maybe this person has some kind of disability or uh, mental illness. Also, is about compassion going into every situation with a non-judgmental attitude, not judging the situation based on what neighborhood it's in, what color the person is, are they a male or female, all that. The next thing that she talks about is going into each new situation without bringing in the baggage from the last situation. Crucial, right? So just to let you know, professional athletes are hiring people to teach them mindfulness for that very reason. What it is is, if you think about you know basketball, hockey, football, um, baseball, a professional athlete needs the ability to screw up on one play or be losing in one quarter and get their head back in the game and go full force so they can come back and win. They need to be able to reset, but if they're bringing that baggage, it's hard for them to reset. Now, imagine what that means for a police officer. They go to the first call and there's some domestic violence or there's just a really bad situation and it completely throws this person off, right? but it's a terrible situation. Now, they get the next call, which is a lot less severe. Like, if they bring in the baggage from their last call into the new call, the, the next call might be getting punished for what happened in the last one. So what she talks about is mindfulness gives police officers the ability to reset and go into a new situation with a clear mind and take it in that moment rather than bringing in the past into this new situation, right? Big, big deal. The next one is letting go at the end of the day. She said something funny, I need to start using it, right? And she's like, well, you either medicate or you meditate, right? And you know, I'm not a police officer, but I understand that aspect of the job. I work in a drug and alcohol rehab. There are days when I have people who are relapsing, losing their, their family, losing their spouse, losing their kids, losing their job, and there are some people who even lose their lives. That takes an emotional toll on me, and that's one of the reasons I have to practice mindfulness, because at the end of the day, I gotta come back home and be a father to my son. I have to pick up my phone for other struggling alcoholics and addicts without dwelling on situations of the past that I can't do anything about. So, you know, it's important just for, you know, mental health of police officers. The next one is the specific stresses that police officers have to deal with. The issue is, is that a lot of police officers and first responders as a whole suffer from minor to severe PTSD is that the brain is constantly logging these bad situations. It's logging them, and it's part of our survival mechanism so we know how to protect ourselves, okay? And what can happen is, is that a police officer can be triggered from something that happened in the past, and it can make them act erratically in a new situation. If you were bit by a dog when fireworks were going off on the 4th of July, right? Your brain made that connection. So the next time you hear a loud noise or a, or a firework, you might tense up because you think, a, you know, your brain is saying, well, remember last time a dog bit you? So imagine that as a cop now, okay? So that is, in my opinion, part of the reasons why some of these police situations escalate so much because police officers haven't properly dealt with some of the traumatic events that they've been through. Before I segue into this next part, 
one of my mindfulness instructors had this question. He said, what would a mindful society look like? And I constantly ask myself that. I, I look at situations, I'm like, what if this person practiced mindfulness? What if both of these people in this situation practice mindfulness? What if this group of people practice mindfulness? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up one of the most recent police incidents and kind of talk about how this incident could have been different. So those of you who didn't hear about the story that happened last month, um, there were some kids walking across the lawn of an off-duty cop. Cop yells something at the kids. Kids yell something back. It escalates. Um, the cop thinks that the kid said he was going to shoot him. Kid says he was going to sue him. And this is kind of what unfolds. Well, what's happening is that cop was triggered, right? This kid is triggered. Okay, so both of them are in this kind of defense, protect my life mode. And what happens is, is when you're incapable of regulating your emotions in that situation, each person is getting worse and worse and worse. And as you can see where this video leads to, the crowd gets worse and worse and worse. And then it escalates to this point. I understand that the cop is fearing for his life at this point. Um, you know, there's a kid who pushed him. There's another kid who jump, jumps over the bushes. There's a kid uh, reaching in his pocket. Don't know what that is. So the cop kind of carelessly reaches for his gun and it discharges. Boom. If we think about mindfulness in this moment-to-moment -moment awareness, just in that second clip, maybe the cop, when he was reaching for his gun, could have paused and said, you know, I'm in way too much of an awkward position to be grabbing for my gun right now. This might be a bad idea. These are a bunch of kids. Right? I might kill one of them. But when you're running fully off the survival mode, the survival instinct, those thoughts don't come up. But what I want to do is kind of rewind the situation and have us ask ourselves, would this situation have got to the point where it is right now at the end of this video had someone had the emotional regulation to de-escalate this situation from the beginning? Maybe he would have said, you know, man, you know what? This is a kid. Or maybe he just wouldn't have been so damn angry about some kids walking across his lawn. I've never really understood why that's a big deal. But now let's think about this. You got a bunch of teenagers there. Now something that, you know, they're starting to do is teach mindfulness in schools too. So let's look at it on the other side of it. Maybe had these kids been taught mindfulness, they could have de-escalated their own emotions in the situation and said, whoa, 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 this guy's you know, uh, this guy's a cop, you know, we're gonna get in trouble, this can get bad, you know, all these different things, but instead their emotions, they're, they're driving purely off emotions, and you see exactly what unfolded. Now look back at all the other situations, right? All these other situations that have happened with the shootings, um, police brutality, the tasers, all sorts of stuff. And think about, what if somebody was able to de-escalate their own emotions in that situation you know, to make this have a better outcome from the beginning. Because right now, we're all looking at it as after the fact. All of them, all of, all of us are doing this kind of hindsight, you know? Well, what if we got to the root of the problem and stop letting these situations get to the point where they're at? So I just wanted to bring that up, and this is practical application of how mindfulness can work in a very serious industry where these uh, men and women are meant to protect and to serve, and we're supposed to be looking at the police officers as our friends and our allies to protect us. So just think about that a little bit, but this is one of the many reasons why mindfulness you know, is such an important practice. And uh, if you like this video, feel free to share it, and I will see you next time.